Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Ho and I am a physics teacher. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be observing Archimedes principle in application. And all you need is just some plaster scene and water. Now, you don't have to get very much plaster scene and you can get cheap plaster scene. You can get one from one of those toy stores or hardware stores near you. You don't have to get very expensive plaster scene as long as it's enough for you to make shapes. So a lot of people don't quite understand how objects are able to float on the surface of water. A lot of people think that, oh, the lower the mass of the object, the likelier it is to float on the surface of the water. But those of us who have learned physics, we know that's not true. We know that it's based on the concept of density. So we know that in order for an object to float on the surface of water, it should have a lower density than water. So for example, this piece of corkboard. You can see that it floats on the surface of the water. And even if we push the board underwater, when we release, it still comes back and floats up to the surface of the water. And that's because the density of this cork is lower than water. On the other hand, if you have a material that has a higher density than water, it's going to sink. For example, this metal nut. Now, this nut is quite light, as you can see. But what makes an object float or sink is not its mass or its weight, but rather its density compared to the density of water. So when we place this metal nut in water, it's going to sink. So even if I try to get it to float, no matter how gently I load it, it's going to sink. Now, besides density, there are also other factors that we have to take into consideration when we want to see whether an object is able to float on the surface of water. So what we're going to do now is we're going to observe how plasticine is able to demonstrate the Archimedes principle in application. If I place this ball of plasticine in water, do you think it's going to float or sink? What do you think? Yeah, it's going to sink. And remember, it's not about its weight. It's because it has greater density than water. So this is why a lot of ships are made out of wood because wood, no matter how heavy it is, it still has a lower density than water, which makes it able to float on the surface of the water. And also when you think about it, hey, aren't there some ships made out of metal? And doesn't metal have a greater density than water? So how is it possible that metal ships are able to float on water? So let's use this plasticine. If you can press the plasticine out to a flat shape, and this is going to take some trial and error, we're probably not going to get this right on the first try. So I'd like to invite you to try this with your own plasticine. If you can press it out enough and make it into a bowl shape rather than into a flat shape, you know, like a plate, you know, let's make it into a bowl shape like this. Now, if you can get that shape right, using the same mass of plasticine as the one we've been using when we saw it sink just now, you'll find that it's able to float. Now, of course, my plasticine bowl has filled with water. You know, it's not watertight. But if we can get it to be watertight enough, so let's close up any holes that we can see. Look, it floats. So what's happening here is this. The shape of the plasticine is important. As I mentioned, it should be a bowl shape because what happens is when we place the plasticine in water, that bowl shape is able to displace a certain amount of water. Archimedes principle states that the buoyant force acting on the object is equal to the weight of the water displaced. The experiment that proves this can be done with the Eureka can, and I will do this in a separate video. For now, let's focus on the plasticine bowl. So the shape of the bowl, like I mentioned, is important because the deeper the shape, the more water is able to displace. The more water is able to displace, that means the greater the force. Because when the volume of water displaced is greater, the weight of water displaced is also greater. And that means the buoyant force acting on the object will also 
be a lot greater. Let me just fix this one more time. And you can see. If we don't get the shape right, if we make it too flat, you'll find that if it's not able to displace enough water, it's not going to float. So I invite you to use your own plaster scene, experiment with different shapes to try to get your plasticine bowl, well not a bowl, plasticine boat to float on the surface. So if you can't get it right, just keep trying and you'll surprise yourself that this particular bowl may be able to even hold items in it as it floats. Let me show you. For example, okay, I know that's not very heavy, but you know, the fact is it's still able to hold items other than itself. It's probably not gonna hold the metal nut because the metal nut is way too heavy. Yeah. But who knows? If you press this pasta scene out enough to displace enough water, it might surprise you. And you may find that hey, it's able to hold the metal nut after all. This is not magic, guys. This is physics. So I hope this very simple activity has helped you understand the application of Archimedes Principle a little bit better. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thanks for watching and have fun.